Genesis chapter number 4 tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read one, one verse and give you the thoughts the good Lord's put upon my heart. Uh, i got to get this off my chest tonight. I woke up with this thought. I went to sleep with it. And this is what the good Lord has for us tonight. If you got it, say amen. Genesis chapter number 4. I want you to look at verse number 16. Genesis chapter number 4, verse number 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Father, I love you tonight. Lord, I am fully aware, God, that you're here. I'm aware of that fact tonight, Father, and I walked out there and asked you, Lord, if you didn't want me to preach, God, that's all right. Lord, that's totally all right with me, but Lord, you, you got us here tonight. Lord, I know, Lord, people's worked all week, and Lord, I appreciate them being here on a Saturday. Lord, I felt last night in my heart, God, things were undone with some people. And Lord, I, you're, you're going to be a merciful God tonight, God, to give them a second warning. And Lord, this could be their very last chance to get some things right. Lord, I, I, I want to thank you, God, for being merciful to me. 16-year-old preacher's kid lost going to hell. God, you were merciful unto me. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, on, on the behalf, God, of your people tonight here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. God, I don't know who's here, what they're going on with in their life. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, for their sake and our sake tonight, Lord, I'm asking you to be one more time, God, to lend your hand. Lord, I really hope, God, people, Lord, hasn't crossed that deadline with you. I pray, God, tonight when you give them one more chance to get that thing right with you. God, there's fear in my heart tonight. Lord, I couldn't sleep last night. and God, you know my heart. Lord, I don't want to see nobody turn down a road and God gets stuck and mess their life up. Dear God, I'm asking you tonight, God, as humbly, Lord, as I know how, God, give them one more chance. God, be merciful. I want to be that Abraham tonight, God, to pray for that one. I'm asking you, Lord, from the bottom recess of my heart, Lord, if you got something coming my way, God, give it to them. God, show mercy tonight. I'm begging you. God, show mercy. Lord, I love you. God, if anything gets accomplished, Lord, please help me to realize it's nothing I can do. It's all God. Lord, be merciful tonight. Lord, anything gets accomplished, it's all of you. And none of us in Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. We find the man Cain. Cain is in a bad time. Cain is left from the presence of the Lord. May I say tonight when anger controls our heart, it causes us to do some bad things. Anger in our heart will build and anger in our heart will cause us to lash out and, and say things. And may I say Cain is in that predicament. Cain has gotten mad at his older brother and his brother, he's mad and he wants to leash out and may I say tonight, you may be here and anger's builded up inside of you. Man, you're, you're mad tonight. You're mad that I'm here. You're mad that, that I'm, I'm here preaching the word of God. You're mad you had to be here tonight. But may I say tonight, you better be very, very, very thankful we have a merciful God. You better be thankful tonight that though your world may be nothing and though you may be full of anger tonight and you're full of bitterness like Cain was, you better be glad, Brother Josh, that we have a God who is full of mercy. 
We have a God who is full of love. We have a God no matter what we're going in. Brother Peter, he loves us and he wants to have the best intentions for us. And man, you're mad and you're bitter at life. And Miss Kathy, we're going to make decisions in our life based on our bitterness and our anger and our heart. I'm begging God that God would get your heart right tonight and you can leave rejoicing in the things of God. May I say this about Brother Cain. God come to him and gave him a warning. Before Cain ever messed his life up, Cain got a word from God. Look there in verse number 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted And if thou not doest not well, see in life at the door. May I say this? God has told Cain, Cain, if you don't get this thing right, right now, Cain, things are going to happen in your life. God has avoided, he's, you know know what Cain did? You don't find there in verse number 8 where it said, and Cain talked with the Lord. You know what Cain did, preacher? He ignored, he avoided the warning from God. You know what he did? He said, I know what I know, Brother Phil. I I will know what I want for my life. Man, I'm telling you, if you can't feel God in here tonight, there's something wrong in your heart. He ignored the warning of God. He ignored it. God told him, he said, Cain, man, things see in life at the door. Saying, Cain, you're about to mess your life up. Cain, you're about to step out and, and make a crazy decision with your life. And I'm glad, Brother James, that God in his long suffering mercy came one more time to Cain. Though Cain ignored the warning. Though Cain said, I don't want nothing to do with you. He could not look at God. He could not blame God for God not giving him one more opportunity to get things right may I say tonight you're at a point in your life where you're just like Cain the spirit of God has been dealing with you the man God's been dealing with you telling you to do some things and yet you refuse man your ears are stopped up and you avoid the warning of God may I say this your life is about to be in total chaos there's things that's going to happen in Cain's life he never thought imagine because he avoided the warning that God has given to him some of you are about to wreck your life but you choose not to listen to God I promise tonight I wish I had something meant a whole lot better but this thing's on my heart Cain got a warning from God Cain said hey God I don't want nothing to do with you I'm going to do what I want he avoided the warning of God God said Cain if you keep on going man sin Lies at the door. Brother Phil, things are about to take place in Cain's life. Cain never thought imaginable because Cain avoided the warning from God. I believe with all my heart, I believe with all my heart that this weekend has happened for a reason. God does not do accidents, preacher. Brother James, God does not make mistakes. Brother Michael, Brother Ray, God does not accident, just accidentally give you a warning. I wish there was something better to preach, but I promise you, this is straight from the beeline of glory. Somebody in here, you're about to make a crazy decision, and God has given you time after time after time to get those things right, and you refuse to listen to God. Your man of God's been praying for you. Man, your family's been praying for you, and you refuse to listen to God you know what I found preacher that God will let us do he'll let us wreck our lives I'll be honest with you I have righteous holy fear in my heart tonight brother Josh Cain avoided the warning not only did Cain avoid the warning I want you to see this in verse number 8 Anger built it in his heart. Miss Renee, can you help me out, please? Anger built it in his heart. You know what happened? They had a worship service. And his brother brought brought the better sacrifice. His brother bought the best things. You know what? It wasn't what Cain had in his hands was wrong. 
You know what was the problem was, Brother Josh? It's what he had in his heart. I appreciate you being here tonight. I'm glad you got your Bible. Thank God for that. But I wonder tonight, it's not what we have in our hands. It's what we have in our heart. I was going to preach on this thought tonight when anger turns to danger. God's given warnings. Miss Kathy, you know, you know what people do? It's like my niece and nephew, I tell them to do something. You know? We find where Cain goes out and kills his own brother. What a sad tragedy. But may I say, there's a silver lining in this thing. I know when God's here, and He's here, man, He's here. I love what the God does. Well, I'll tell you, man, somebody's in trouble tonight. After Cain goes out and slays his own brother, preacher, I want you to look at this, and I'm going to be quick, I promise. We find there in, in the verse number 9, right after Cain murdered his own brother, look who shows up. Some of y'all ain't looking at it. Look with me there in verse number 9. Right after Cain murdered his own brother, guess who shows up? Let me ask that again. Right after Cain murders his own brother, guess who shows up? After Cain ignored the warning, after Cain jacked up his life, after Cain gets himself in a mess, after Cain ruins his life, after Cain hurts his family's life, after Cain hurts his own life, guess who walked in? God. May I say tonight, I'm very thankful that we have a God who is full of mercy. I'm glad though I may fail one time, Miss Kathy. I'm glad I got a God who comes on the first time. I'm glad I got a God who comes on the second time. I'm glad I got a God who comes on the third time. I'm glad I got a God who comes on the fourth time. I'm glad I got a God that comes time and time and time again. You may be here tonight and you failed God. You failed God one time but yet there God stands you may fail God five or six times but I'm glad we have a God who is full of mercy he loves you tonight no matter what you're in we got a God who will show up and help you out of that mess if you enjoyed today's message head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons and don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast as always thanks for listening